The Falklands War was a 10-week undeclared war between Argentina and the United Kingdom in 1982. The conflict took place over two British dependent territories in the South Atlantic, the Falkland Islands and its territorial dependency, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands. The conflict began on the 2nd of April 1982 when Argentine President Leopoldo Galtieri gave the order to initiate Operation Rosario to invade and occupy the Falkland Islands followed by the invasion of South Georgia the next day. Two days later, on the 5th of April 1982, the British government dispatched a naval task force to engage the Argentine Navy. This operation was dubbed Operation Corporate. The conflict was a major episode in the protracted dispute over the territory's sovereignty. Argentina asserted and maintains that the islands are Argentine territory and the Argentine government thus characterized its military action as the reclamation of its own territory. The British government regarded the action as an invasion of a territory that had been a crown colony since 1841. Falkland Islanders, who have inhabited the island since the early 19th century, are predominantly descendants of British settlers and strongly favored British sovereignty. Neither state officially declared war, although both governments declared the islands a war zone. On the 8th of June 1982, British warships near Bluff Cove are attacked by Argentine A-4 Skyhawks. Using conventional dumb bombs, the low-flying Argentine planes damage two ships, RFA Sir Galahad and RFA Sir Tristram. On this day in 1982, Argentinian jets perpetrated the deadliest single attack on British troops of the Falklands War. The Battle of Bluff Cove claimed 56 British lives and accounted for one-fifth of all British fatalities sustained during the Falklands conflict. The Argentine Skyhawks were scrambled after Argentinian forces spotted British troops and equipment being brought to shore by landing ships. RFA Sir Galahad and RFA Sir Tristram were hit by the first wave of aircraft. Sir Galahad, loaded with Welsh guards and ammunition, was hit by three 500-pound bombs, all dropped from the same aircraft. The bombs ignited the stores of fuel and ammunition, and the ship instantly blew into flames. The Inferno claimed 48 lives and left more than 100 wounded, many severely burned. Two further bombs hit Sir Tristram, killing two crew members. As helicopters moved in to rescue survivors, a second wave of Argentine aircraft roared into view. They hit a small landing craft carrying troops ashore from HMS Fearless, killing six Royal Marines. The British scrambled their Harriers in an attempt to protect the damaged ships from further attacks, which would almost certainly cause them to be sunk. The Sea Harriers were far outclassed by their Argentine counterparts when it came to aerial combat. The Harriers were designed to be ground attack aircraft and carried sidewinders for self-defense. They were now being asked to find and engage Mirage 3s and A4 Skyhawks. The Mirage 3s, which had twice the speed and a 50% height advantage, and a missile with a head-on shot twice as long as the Sidewinders the Harriers were carrying. If all that wasn't enough, the British knew the Argentines could deploy up to 180 aircraft, varying from Mirage 3s to A4s for the conflict against the British, who had only 21 Sea Harriers. Two Harriers were sent up to keep watch as aid is rendered to the two damaged British ships. They stay on station for an estimated 35 to 40 minutes, knowing full well the Argentine bombers would be back to finish the job. The lead Harrier, flown by Lieutenant Commander David Morgan, spots a formation of four aircraft on an attack run from the east, vectoring onto the two already damaged and limping ships. Morgan and his wingman immediately vector onto the four aircraft, now identified as Argentine A-4 Skyhawks. The lead Harrier immediately gets a Sidewinder solution on the lead Skyhawk and lets loose his Sidewinder, scoring the first kill. The three remaining Skyhawks immediately break defensive, searching for their attackers. As the lead Harrier rolls the aircraft out of the attack on the first Skyhawk, he finds himself pointing right at the number two A4 Skyhawk. Again, the Sidewinder acquires a quick lock, 
Morgan fired the Sidewinder, hitting the second A4 at a 90 degree aspect, vaporizing the aircraft. At this point, his Harrier is out of Sidewinders, and he breaks off, allowing his wingman to take a shot at the third Skyhawk. As Morgan climbed out of the engagement, his wingman fired off a Sidewinder, which again found its mark on the third Skyhawk. Not a single shoot was seen from any of the three Skyhawks, and all pilots were later confirmed killed in action. As the two Harriers looked around for the fourth Skyhawk, he was nowhere to be found, having made a run for home immediately after seeing three of his formation vaporized in a few seconds. The Harriers, having thwarted the enemy attack, returned to their carriers with three kills under their belt. The conflict lasted 74 days and ended with an Argentine surrender on the 14th of June, 1982, returning the islands to British control. In total, 649 Argentine military personnel and 255 British military personnel and three Falkland Islanders died during the hostilities. Simon Weston, one of the Welsh guards injured on board the Sir Galahad, went on to become the symbol of Britain's war in the Falklands. Only 20 at the time, he survived despite suffering burns to 46% of his body, resulting in more than 70 operations. As part of the mental healing process, Weston agreed to meet First Lieutenant Carlos Chacon, the Argentinian pilot responsible for his injuries. Against all odds, they became great friends. Weston said, quote, the Argentine pilot was with him since then and they are still very good friends. We shared a fraction of a second in time. Our countries were at war and after talking to him, he told me that he did not know there were so many people on that boat. He had the uniform of his country and he was very good at his work." End quote. More than 38 years after the war, Weston maintains a relationship of friendship with 1st Lieutenant Carlos Chacon. 